Um, do you think dysphoria is the single reason that causes people to identify with a specific label on the transgender umbrella or under the transgender umbrella? And if not, what else ma what else makes you genderqueer or FTM or MTF? Um, so same thing, I think we're all complex individuals. I think we're made up of so many different aspects of our personality and sometimes they coincide with what society deems as acceptable, sometimes they don't. Um, I don't think dysphoria is the be all and end all, although I believe, and from what I said earlier, it would have to be some kind of trigger point to get you to question, uh, question gender in the first place. Um, but there's many more aspects and merit, many more uh, experiences and influences and things that would make a person choose a particular label uh, across that spectrum or under the trans umbrella. Um, so I chose genderqueer because that's what feels more comfortable um, for me. Uh, there's other terms that fit as well, but I don't choose to use them. I don't choose to associate with them. Genderqueer works well for me, um, as well as some other terms like non-binary, which I use. I also use trans. Um, but I've come at those terms and have learnt and grown into those terms through a process of you know, elimination of what I'm not from seeing where I fit to see where I don't fit to you know taking on those labels and seeing how they go for a while and then rejecting them or keeping them. Uh, also, my own understanding of myself my own understanding of gender, my own understanding of the community, my own understanding of those def different definitions of different labels and experiences uh, have, you know, changed over time and has made me sit in the place where I am in regards to my gender, uh, which feels comfortable. And I don't think that's going to change, but I can't guarantee it. I can't guarantee that I may identify differently at a later stage. And I think that's perfectly fine and valid as well. Um, so, yeah, there's multitudes of experiences and... Uh, pressures and uh, life factors and biological and emotional and uh, mental and physiological and uh, family and religion and cultural and all that stuff that can impact uh, how you see yourself, how you view yourself as a person, um, why you question these things in the first place and then where you choose to um, reside in terms of which identity you uh, fall under. I guess the thing there is, they're just words, they're just terms, loosely based definitions, umbrella, uh, things to help you describe yourself as best as you can. So however you feel inside, there's probably a word out there for you to, uh, to grab onto. It may not be 100% um, match or fit, but that's, it's just language. And to a great extent, as I kind of always say, you kind of make those labels your own. You... Um, you know, there's no definitive way to be genderqueer or there's no definitive way to be trans or gender fluid or gender non-conforming or anything else. You take those terms, you take what you like about them, you discard what you don't, um, you become the term, they become you, and you, as the process of experiencing and living it, uh, end up redefining that term. So that's what genderqueer kind of is to me. And, and the last part of the question, is there such a feeling of being male or female? or neither or both, or is it mainly a response to what society taught us about gender? <sighs> this is probably the toughest part, and I want to say... I want to say something different every second. I think I've thought about this in the past, my own gender journey, if you will. Um, this particular kind of question has evolved and changed in the way that I see and view it has changed over time. At this point in time, I'm going to say it's mainly a response to what society taught us about gender. I think that society has created this idea of what gender is based on physiological sex, uh, the gender binary that we talk about quite often, um, you know, this group of roles and expectations and uh, everything that goes along with what bitch you're born with. But, you know, I think we're all individuals. I think we're all insanely incredibly complicated individuals made up of a whole lot of different parts that goes beyond this rigid definition of societal defined gender um yeah we're born into physical bodies that in themselves have infinite amount of variation uh and you know we can loosely categorize ourselves based on our reproductive organs but we all know that's not 100 percent foolproof anyway you know but i believe that each individual person essentially if you strip it down each could potentially have their own gender. There's not just male or female. Different cultures, different times have 
viewed or identified other genders. Maybe there's many, many genders that um, have never been identified yet, or maybe there's just not a word for it, or maybe it's just a fancy societal way of labeling something that is really just the person and who they are. Um, so there's as many genders as there are people, and in that sense, it is just a reaction to society, what society says is the norm, or what society says, how many genders there are, which one you should fit in, or how that should match your biology. Um, I think that that's the case. But then, at the same time, we also very much have our own inherent views on how we feel inside, whether that's male or female or both or neither or a combination of both or something completely different or associating with a word or a term or something completely different. So it is that societal pressure, it's that societal influence that helps shape how we view gender in the first place. It's our own inherent interpretation of that, our internalisation of those events and how we feel about ourselves, and the interplay and the interconnection uh, and variation between those things. So I just completely contradicted what I first said. <laughs> um, I think it's both. Okay, that's gone on for a long time. I don't know if that's coherent or has made any, uh, any sense. So, um, But thanks so much, Felix, for asking this question. I think it's great and, yeah, seriously has given me a lot of food for thought. I hope I have answered it somehow competently, <laughs> although I feel like I've just waffled on for quite a bit of time. But, um, yeah, it'll be very interesting to hear what everyone else has to say, and I'm sure we'll all view this differently and have different opinions and uh, ways of deciphering it. And, uh, yeah, hit us up with your questions, and we uh, look forward to hearing from you all. So see you next week, guys.